Hey, how's it going? Great, man. Thanks for doing this. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course, dude. Did you grow up in, in, are you in Nashville now? No. So I actually grew up uh, just south of LA in Southern California. And that's where I still live now. Oh, um, my cool. that's between home and LA. Rad that we're in Southern California too. We're in San Diego. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. So I'm right in the middle. But where'd you LA. grow up? Like I Orange grew County? Up oh, yeah. okay. Cool. Cool. Tell me about that. Um, it was cool. Like I really loved, I really loved the environment of where I grew up and like how, you know, how beautiful it was. And I grew up by the ocean, which is a kind of a big part of who I am. And, um, yeah, I love that. I love, you know, I don't know. I, I like being close to, to my family now because everything is in LA. So I'm still like close to be able to come home and hang out and yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have access to all the music and studios exactly. and everything, like, you know, less than an hour away. <laughs> exactly. Right on, man. Well, uh, what was the first instrument you learned how to play? So, I mean, what I, the first instrument I actually learned how to play was guitar. But mm -hmm. it started because I guess when I was like seven years old, we were at my grandparents' house and they had a piano. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, oh, like, we'll teach you how to play whatever chopsticks. And I don't really remember this, but apparently I learned how to play chopsticks pretty fast. Uh -huh. So she was like, OK, let me I'm going to get him a guitar for his birthday. And then I actually picked guitar up and did that for, you know, ever since. But she'll say piano. I'll say guitar. Complicated question. <laughs> The chopsticks didn't cut it into your first yeah. instrument. <laughs> it is your eyes. That's Not funny. in my book. <laughs> right on, man. So you seven or eight, you said you got the guitar? Yeah, I got it when I was like, yeah, for my seventh or eighth birthday. Sweet. And then from there, were you, well, how'd you learn? Just hours and hours of playing? Did you get lessons? Um, yeah, I had, I had lessons. Um, and then it just became like something that I just like love doing. So like me and my neighbors and my best friends, we made a little garage band literally in my garage. And <laughs> that's where the real like love for it came from. It's just like performing like cover songs um, and just messing around with, with my like best friends. Yeah. What yeah. covers were you guys doing? Oh my gosh. How This is going to be so weird because to you, these are going to be like songs that were like just out, but it was like, <laughs> it was like, Counting Stars by one uh by um One Republic. Uh -huh. It was like oh my god, this is so funny. We did like such random songs. So we would do like that and then we would do like Bad to the Bone. And then we would do like, <laughs> Sweet Home Alabama and then we did Oh my gosh, we did so many. We did Too Close, which was like by yeah. Avalon, which is one of my favorite songs to perform. Um it was like, I don't know, it was a mix between like songs that had just come out and then songs that were, you know, like older like songs. Older one. That's funny. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I haven't thought about that in a long time. That's really, that's really funny. <laughs> were you the singer in the band? Yeah, I was a singer. <laughs> nice. When did you start writing your own songs? Um, I started writing. So, so when we did that band up until basically high school and then when everyone went to high school, my buddies were like, okay, like, cool. That was fun. But you know, we're done. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't know if I am yet. So in high school, I would, you know, I kind of like kept doing it and I kind of kept it to myself. Um, and I was going to a studio that was kind of right down the street from where I lived and just, just working and writing and, and, you know, doing my homework at lunch so that I could go after school to the studio and, and work all night long. So I'd say kind of started then and I was absolutely horrible at writing back then for sure. Um, and it was more just like being a part of, of the process and, and then did that for a couple of years. And then when things really started getting going in the last like year, two years um, and things started to move kind of up to LA, uh, I really like adopted the songwriting as like a part of myself. And that's where it got really, really like personal and where, you know, all the music that's coming out now or starting to come out are songs that, that, you know, are like basically written a lot by me and, and someone else or a couple writers in the room, but they're my stories, which is really cool. Very cool. Really cool. Yeah. So when you got to high school and your friends kind of decided music wasn't going to be their thing. Yeah. Uh, how did you get up to LA? Like, how did you make those connections? 
Um, I got really lucky. I met somebody who actually co-manages me now with Scooter, um, this guy, Troy. And he basically found me or we found each other while he was working somewhere else and, and he was doing his thing, but basically kind of was somewhat of a mentor in, in the early stages of, of helping me meet some people in the industry and, and helping me, you know, get, he actually was working with the band pretty much at the time and ended up, that's how I ended up getting on that tour was through him. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. It was, it was really like a really coincidental, but lucky thing that, that we connected because, you know, it just kind of like worked at the same time. And, and he brought me into what he was doing and I was like open arms, everything I could get on and grasp. So, yeah. Wow. Tell me about getting on that tour with pretty much. It was awesome. It was like, it was really crazy. I had, I had no music at the time. Like when, when I found out I was going, I was going on tour in October and it was like July and I had no, or no music that was like good enough yet. You know, like I said, I was horrible at writing for like whatever the first half of this all. So basically I had to start cram writing sessions. Like I flew to Nashville. I was in Nashville for like two weeks writing songs. Um, I did, I think two, two months of just writing songs to get, to get eight good ones for tour. Mm -hmm. So, uh, wow. yeah. So basically I had to write all these songs and then got them and, and performed them on tour. And it was, I mean, tour was a crazy, crazy experience for me because it was kind of like the validation of like, okay, this is like what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't, I mean, we didn't have any shows up until that first show what we did on that tour in Seattle. So for like my family and like, you know, this guy, Troy, I'm talking about, and everyone was kind of like, okay, Gunner, like, you know, there's, you don't, don't set expectations. Like you don't know how this is going to go. And then like from the second that I started on the first show, it was like, oh my God, like this is, this is what I want to do and what I'm supposed to do forever. So that whole tour was just the best experience. I just got to get face to face with, with fans and um, perform, which is my favorite thing. And yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. And were you just touring by yourself? Were you just no. you oh, guitar, oh, or did you have a band and stuff? Oh yeah, on tour. It was me and a drummer. So oh, okay. it was really cool. It was a really cool dynamic. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So from that tour, what 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 was next for you? So it was weird. That was like like I said, like it kind of happened really, really quick. And mm -hmm. it it jump started a lot of a lot of things for me. And and after that tour, like things were happening really fast and and you know i was doing a bunch of of meetings figuring out you know if and if and where i was going to sign a record deal and and it was just a crazy time and i don't know it was one of those things where it was like okay we can either and this was a really hard decision for me to make because it was either like okay we have we have some momentum right now and we can either we can either just keep going and keep putting these songs out and and just try to keep this momentum going or it was you know let me take a second, regroup myself, re make sure this music's perfect because, you know, like I said, I, I care more about performing, more about, about music and, and this career than anything in the world. So it's like, I wanted to make sure that this was not going to be something that, that flashed for a moment and then was gone. So um, my team and I made a decision to basically, you know, take, take a step back um, and, and really spend more than a month writing all these songs. Um, so for the last year, basically, we are the last year up until like a couple months ago, I should say, we were just writing and and figuring out my artistry and figuring out who I was as a person and, and all these things. And um, I think, or I know that we got a bunch of really good music and we're at a point now where, where it's just going to start coming out and, and hopefully everyone's going to start seeing seeing that it's true and that it that it that it means a lot to me and and that that step back to regroup was like really intentional and really purposeful yeah, yeah. and did you end up signing to a record label or are you yes yeah, so i ended up signing like i said i signed with scooter um which is which is exciting and i signed with uh big machine uh, yeah oh okay yeah yeah wow that's right. awesome yeah it was i, I mean I, it's just it's crazy. It's a crazy process. Why did you decide on Big Machine? They just had the best deal for you. Um, no, it was it was the way that it was 
I really wanted to end up with Scooter. Um, and the way that it worked out is, you know, he was, he was basically like, you know, I want to be with you. Um, you want to be with me. Like, let's figure out the best place to where, you know, we can put you, he, he's basically, we can put you a big machine and you and I get to, to, you know, to basically do what, what we think is right for your career. And, and yeah, at the time that was, that was it. That was what we did. Mm -hmm. So, and so the songs that you have out currently, like on Spotify, are those the, the, I see like for your love. I think that's the only one I, that that's you it. Have no, that's it. Yeah. Is that the only one you've released to the public so, so far? We were literally just about to get going when all this quarantine started. So we put oh. one song out. And then we're going to keep going and keep going, but then quarantine. But the exciting news is that this Friday um, starts the the beginning that should have been a couple months ago again. So this song uh, on Friday is a song called Can't Say No. And then we've got a bunch of music coming out this summer that I'm really excited about. Wow. Will it all come like cohesively into like an EP oh, yeah. or an album? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll do, we'll have this song that comes out this week and then sometime probably early mid month next month we'll uh we'll put a little ep out and then we have we have a really good a uh, really cool idea for this for this summer um which i can't give too much away but it'll sure. be a lot of singles and it'll be a lot of music and um you know some some collaborations and some live performances um yeah rad really yeah. exciting that's really exciting dude you have a huge following on instagram Thank you. <laughs> For your love, was that the first song you've ever like released to the public? <laughs> yeah, well, we released we released two songs from that tour, um, but like I said, that was you know that music was like old gun, old gunner mm -hmm. stuff. So okay, um, it's cool. It's a lot of a lot of the oops, a lot of the followers from Instagram came from that from that tour, and for that, I'm really thankful. And and you know they've been really patient in this last year of getting no music, but. I don't know. Instagram to me is one of those things where it's like whatever, whatever platform or whatever way is the best way for me to connect with my audience is like the platform that I'm going to want to use the most. So, uh -huh. um, you know, to you, you see, you know, Instagram looks awesome. And to me, I'm like, I'm just at the very, 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 very beginning. So <laughs> man, yeah, you have a ton of followers. It looks great to me. <laughs> and you have great interaction on the, on your posts and stuff too, which is really cool that's you know, awesome yeah my my fans are like family at this point because you know we've been through a lot yeah yeah totally you said that uh whatever platform you like to use to, or whatever platform works best for you to connect to your fans yeah. i noticed that you have a tiktok are you are you big into that one dude i love tiktok it's the it's the funniest and like best content platform i think like of all time Really? I, I spend more time on TikTok than I think. Like, if I pick my phone up and I'm going to spend two hours on my phone for, like, whatever, <laughs> I'm going to spend an hour and 50 minutes of it on TikTok. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I'll check Instagram and I'll go through my feed and I'll, and I'll you know, go through my messages and respond to, to people and whatnot. And then I'm just, like, TikTok. And then I, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I love TikTok, but it's not as good of, like, a fan interaction platform mm -hmm. and for that twitter is my favorite because okay. twitter's like super conversational and it's super like almost laid back as for instagram feels really professional to me that's but, interesting yeah because yeah. i mean growing up i saw you know the the for like the friendster to myspace to facebook yeah. so <laughs> like like the whole you know, catalog of everything that kind of came out. I, I don't know. Personally, I feel like Twitter is, are there a lot of younger people on Twitter? There's a crazy amount of, of people on Twitter. The stand community on Twitter is, is enormous. Okay. Cause I always feel like Twitter is like more like breaking news or like you hear about, you know, companies using it. So I didn't know if I was kind of detaching from like, no, maybe it the is, audience. It the is. Younger audience. Yeah, it is for for it is like the it is the stands, which are basically like the if you haven't heard that term, they're like uh -huh. the hardcore fans, like they're like the family, you know, like stands are are 
all over Twitter. And they're the ones that are like super active and super always on it and super conversational. So I don't know. I think Twitter, I, I, I think Twitter's the easiest for me to use because I can just tweet whatever I'm feeling or, or whatnot. And then without having to think about it. And like I said, I don't know why, but Instagram to me feels like professional. Yeah, that's so funny. Cause yeah. like I think like Facebook as like the old people like Yeah. Here's no, my company's sure. Facebook page. But like yeah, but I guess Instagram is their own by them and they're kind of going that route now. It's almost like you know, I said you have 187,000 followers on Instagram, which is like awesome, but it's like people base success off following and it's pretty Seriously. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> um, well, tell me about For Your Love. Why did you decide on that song? To, yeah, you know, so For Your Love, like I said, we were, we were getting ready for this, you know, all this music release mm-hmm. and obviously quarantine. But For for Your Love was released first because to me, that song kind of has a lot more of my roots. And coming out this next week and, and obviously throughout the summer, like, you know, we have some really good pop songs, like some really, really good super energy pop songs that you know that are i feel like obviously they're they're still my songs that i wrote and they still have meaning and and every one of my songs like you know has has intention and has has a lot of meaning but i don't know i feel i felt like for your love was like the the foundation of who gunner gunner gale is so it was like you know i wanted to put that song out, out first because when there's these songs that you know, someone who doesn't know who I am, here's here's a song on the radio. It's like, oh, who is this? I want them to be able to go see, like, you know, okay, there's a real artist, like, at the book, like, through all of this. And from the very start, there's a real artist. So For Your Love kind of really showcases that. It's really stripped down. It's mm-hmm. really um, vocal and guitar prominent. It's really, like, it's really just, like, thoughtful, well-written song. So I wanted to put that out first to kind of, set a foundation of people for people to look back on and be like, okay, I get it. Okay. So that kind of sets the tone. It sets the tone for the rest of what will become like a record. Kind of. Yeah. I I'd say, I'd say it sets the tone of like, of how I've gotten to where I am kind of, you know, like that song shows like, you know, big anthemic type of chorus, you know, um, well-written music like I grew up listening to John Mayer um, mm-hmm. listening to like really big rock pop songs um, yeah just like it has story it has real real meaning and it makes me feel something so I wanted to start with that so when the real pop songs come later like there's it's easy to go back and see the whole story and see okay there's like a real artist right here cool very exciting yeah. I can't wait to see it um so tell me have you been able to play like for your love live or anything like you did that one tour uh what yeah. did you did you perform around la after that um haven't done any tours since then but i actually believe it or not i actually just played for your love at wembley arena in london which is really what? crazy <laughs> tell me yeah. about that holy crap. um yeah so so i'm a part of this this charity called we so they they you know do these these basically huge concert celebration events that um, all across the country and, and, you know, in, in UK and Canada, and basically it's just this performance of a bunch of different artists who are involved with, with the organization. And yeah, I got to come perform one of my songs there. So obviously it was right around for your love release time. So we re- we released and played that and it was absolutely awesome. Wow. Was it like yeah. a full stadium of people? Full stadium of people. Oh my Mind God. blowing. Wow. Oh my gosh. That must yeah. have been crazy. Super was, cool. Was that nerve wracking before going up on stage? Um, I mean, always like, yes, but yeah, no, it was nerve wracking for sure. <laughs> it was like, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, like I got one song, so I got to just, you know, get out there, do my thing. And yeah, it was fine. It was awesome. It was so much fun. That's so rad. Whenever yeah. I think of Wembley, I just think of the Foo Fighters concert. Have you seen that, the video of that? No. Uh, oh, oh yes. I've seen the video of that. I'm sure. Yeah. I like, think of, I think of the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. 
movie. Oh yeah, good point. That's a good one too. <laughs> yeah, I just think of like Winley, like Foo Fighters, Love of Winley. I just remember that as like a Whoa. pivotal moment, but awesome. Bohemian Rhapsody as well. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome that you got to play that venue, man. That's yeah, that's quite the like, super uh, cool. Yeah, wow. I want to get back there one day for for my own show. Totally, you'll be there yeah. soon. <laughs> well, what was the first? When was the first time you ever played like? your own song in front of people your own music in front of people um it was tour it was it was that first oh. show in seattle i think that was yeah that literally was the first time that i performed original music for people wow was yeah. that what was more nerve-wracking wimley or that that for sure like so they they there's this there's this saying when it comes to touring called called being tour tight which means like everything is just you're in your routine uh -huh. and so i'm giving this kind of backstory because it, it it it's funny in the terms of like the whole tour so by the mid end of the tour you know like okay i go on at 7 30 so i come down from the green room at like probably 7 20 25 i put my in-ears in and i like you know bounce around for a second my intro starts but it's like you know 7 30 i come down at like 7 25 the first show, I think I was downstairs next to stage at like 6.45. Like, like people were still filling in. And I was like jumping around. I was like, I'm so nervous. I'm so excited. Like, is it time to go? Is it time to go? Is it time to go? It's like, no, Gunnar, it's not even 7. Okay, now it's 7. You get 30 more. Now it's 7.15. You got 15 more minutes. And then I was like so nervous. But yeah, by the time, by the time, like... I actually got to walk down on stage. It was like, you know, all that disappear or it doesn't disappear, but all that transforms into like adrenaline and positive energy. Sure. Did you acknowledge that you had, that this is your first tour and first show? Yeah, when you for went out sure. There? For cool. sure. How was the crowd response? Was it what you? What, it was like, great. I could not have asked for anything better. That's so it was, cool. I mean, and it was the first show. So like I said, my parents and like my team, they were like, hey, you know, like don't set expectations. Like, cause they weren't sure, you know, like, you know, I was on tour pretty much. And, and they were like, I don't know how, how, you know, how this is going to go really. And I just, I don't know. I never, I guess I never really heard that. And I was just like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And then it was incredible. And they, they were, you know, my show has a lot of energy and my songs have a lot of energy, which pretty much has a lot of energy. So their fans have a lot of energy. So mm -hmm. it like worked out really well. So yeah, I was pumped. I was really pumped. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear the the new stuff when it comes out. You said this coming Friday, it's going to start trickling it out. Yeah. Uh, what, what, like the new song that you're going to release, is it similar to For Your Love? You want to tell us about no. that one a little bit? It is definitely more of the music that I would like to, to be making and performing um, way more high energy, way more, you know, like way more moving, I should say. Like, yeah, it's totally, I mean, it's all me and they're all my, my songs and um, you know, you'll hear the cohesiveness in it, but it's definitely way more of a upbeat pop song. Very cool. So I'm really, this is one of my favorite songs that I've ever written and I'm really excited that it's coming out nice yeah i can't wait to hear it man I, i'm really excited i awesome. love the i love for your love and i i can't wait to hear the rest of what, what you thank got you so on. much thank yeah. you thanks for doing this man i really appreciate it thanks for having me yeah awesome. have you done any like have you been, had a chance to play like for your love like on instagram live or test any of your songs on there yeah we've been we've done when quarantine was starting i was doing a bunch a bunch of the acoustic stuff and a mm -hmm. bunch of lives and and um acoustic sets for different you know like platforms uh, like raising money for views type of things and yeah so i played it a couple times acoustic but i like I, I like the live you know the real live stuff so acoustic can only showcase so much sure but at least you know you have a good song yeah, yeah they always say like if you can play it acoustic then and that's what right. sounds good <laughs> that's right very cool, man. Well, I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, um, totally. I would say this This is something that, that I hear other artists say, but it actually, to me, means more than like any other advice I could ever give, is literally follow your gut. 
like do what you think is the right thing to do, but also trust, you know, trust your internal team and trust your internal people to make decisions with you. So trust your gut. And when you don't know, like trust the people that you've chose to be around. Bring it back for you.